As technology has evolved, so has the way in which people both use and behave with information. This change in how people interact with information is quite noticeable and has helped shape an important branch of informatics. This branch is called information behavior. Information behavior is the totality of human behavior in relation to both sources and channels of information. This broad definition lends itself to depict just how expansive the topic of information behavior truly is. At the same time, it is also useful to note that this field is constantly redefining itself. With each new wave of technology comes sometimes subtle, sometimes blatant, reshaping of the relationship between people and information. These changes then lead to the evolution of information behavior over time. In order to highlight a few of the numerous modern theories of information behavior, let us now turn our attention towards the life of our imaginary subject, Bobby. In our journey through a day in Bobby's life, we will explore a few of these theories in a real-world context and emerge with a better understanding of how information behavior is intertwined with our everyday lives. We are now thrown into the midst of Bobby's first week at UW. Bobby wants to meet his friend Jill at Odegaard. But he doesn't know how to get there. Being the resourceful young lad he is, Bobby decides to get the information he needs by using Google Maps to find a path from Lander to Odegaard. As he browses the map, he becomes more and more sleepy due to the late nights spent studying. Suddenly, Bobby happens upon a Starbucks on the Ave, and it is in this instance that we are presented with our first look at an information behavior theory. The discovery Bobby just experienced is called an information encounter. An information encounter occurs when a person has a need for some sort of information, but receives that information while doing something else or without actively searching for it. Five steps are commonly associated with the process of information encountering. First, the information seeker must notice that there is an information that they need being presented to them. Second, they must be willing to stop whatever they are doing to look at this information. Third, they must examine this information and determine whether it is truly relevant to their needs. Fourth, they must capture the information by comprehending it and remembering it in some way. Finally, they are able to return to their previous activities. In Bobby's case, his information need is a desire for coffee that will wake him up and his encounter is finding a Starbucks while searching for the library. Bobby has about an hour before he needs to be at the library, so he decides that he is going to go to Starbucks after acquiring this information, so he packs up and heads out. As Bobby buys his coffee, he browses Facebook and sees that Jill has sent him a picture of a map because she was worried he couldn't figure out how to get to the library. On this map, Jill drew a red line from Lander to Odegaard to help him find the path more easily. The problem is that Bobby is now at Starbucks, so the information provided by the indicated path doesn't help him very much. This map that Jill provides is a basic example of a theory called cognitive work analysis. In cognitive work analysis, the idea is to analyze the framework of constraining information about a situation in order to better guide the information behavior of a user. This allows the user to make decisions about what information they need based on realistically changing conditions instead of being confined to a single course of action. An example of this would be if Jill gave Bobby textual directions, like turn left here as opposed to the map. The informational needs and constraints of users are not static, and thus, by having flexibility within an information system, the user is able to explore multiple interactions with the provided information. Ultimately, this provides a better experience and the user can gain more from the information provided. Jill provided Bobby with a path. And even though this information is not helpful to Bobby, he is instead able to use the constraints of Jill's map to find the information he needs to get to the library. Through our journey, the various theories we have touched on have shown us just a little portion of the total breadth of information behavior. For individuals, information behavior is important to recognize so you can play on your behavioral strength and get the most out of the information you interact with. For information providers, it is essential to understand information behavior in order to provide the user with the best information experience possible. Overall, we may not always notice it, but information behavior is an integral part of our daily lives and has played a big role in shaping the world we live in today.